Alright, lads and lasses, I'm Eccentric Racer, and I am doing something a little bit different this time. I'm doing a top whatever video. Uh, this one is going to be 15. I've not done one of these before, so I apologise if it's a little bit terrible. Anyway, as a lot of you are probably aware by now, I am a massive, massive fan of the Burnout franchise. In fact, it's my favourite franchise of all time. Even some of the games that were a little bit on the um, weaker sh side, shall we say. Um, however, on to the main three: Burnout 3, Burnout Revenge, Burnout Paradise. I've enjoyed all of these car, all of these games, sorry, and the cars in it especially. Whilst three and Revenge kind of the cars drive differently, Burnout Paradise's cars drive a hell of a lot differently to one another. No, and obviously, it's what, it depends on what car you go in. Things like the sports car, so the or maybe a classic Mon car, tuna cars, for instance, hot rods that do wheelies and things like that, there you go, there's a bit of wheelie, or classic muscle cars, ignore that crash, and they all will drive differently, and all based off cars, like in the other ones, like for this for instance, based off the Mitsubishi FTO, the F the SI7, apologies, yeah, there's just so many cars that in, the, in this, and there's just one for everyone, so I decided to make a top 15 of all my favourite cars in Burnout Paradise, without further ado, let's get into the list. When it comes to mad cars, you can't really ignore the Extreme Hot Rod. I mean, it's in the name, Extreme. This is absolutely just mental. Uh, it, it was a boost special car, so it was originally DLC in the 360, but in the remastered version, it comes as part of the uh, of the thing. Now, this car is a insanely quick one with a speed start of 7. The boost as well is 10, and it's just, I mean, have you seen the thing? Plus, as well, it just impressive wheelies and the boost as soon as you hit it that's it it is locked on you better hold on for dear life because this car is just absolutely insanely quick and it's just mental at the same time a small crash and that is it the car is just completely wiped out as you well seeing there just that crash in the back of the hatchback and that is it wrecked but the thing about it is because i'm not having to hold the a button all of your um all of the driving just is focused on just trying to hold on for dear life with this thing and, and the looks of it is just incredible the ridiculous engine size the huge wing the front splitter and things like that it, it's just a hot rod drag king in, in the sense I, just, I can't help but just love it that it sounds brilliant as well which uh, just adds the uh, which just is the icing on the cake not only that when you actually do decide to do some barrel rolls it is it can do a serious amount of barrels if you manage to do it properly. Not quite like that, I will admit. Yeah, a bit more like this example. Now yes, this does include the Nighthawk. Now before you start hating at me and spitting your drink everywhere, let me explain. The thing about the GT Concepts is that they are just incredibly good cars. Overall, they've got some good pace behind them. They sound actually pretty damn nice. And when it comes to like how they drive and things like that, they are very, very responsive. Not only that, the regular Concept is a stunt car. So when you when you need to take a car to stunt runs it's actually pretty damn good not only that because of its weight if you're doing some multiplayer stuff and someone is after you because of because of the strength of it you are actually able to deal out some damage as well you are able to fight back in the concept that you might not be able to do in a lot of the other uh, stunt cars and that really what helps elevate it into the higher potential so yeah it's a great driving car it looks good sounds good and has that weight behind it to f 
fend off people trying to ruin your stunt run, so it is easily going to be up here for me. the P12. I mean, come on, it had to be on here at some point, doesn't it? Sport and possibly my favourite livery in any of the Burner Paradise cars. It just, it, and plus as well, it's based off a Lamborghini Countach. What is not to love about the P12? It just looks great. It drives incredible as well. Complemented by a stunt boost, so you know, if you are needing a car that does barrel rolls and whatnot, then really this is just for you. Not only that, the DLC variant, the P1288 Special, I mean, come on, it's a reference to Back to the Future. The car has a hover mode. When you boost, it ejects flames, and not only that, you can just be able to swap between hover mode and road mode whenever you want. It easily deserves a spot on the list. Originally a car on the shortlist, the Hydrus uh, Custom, normally with its front wheel drive conversion, I, I wasn't the hugest fan of it, but as soon as I drove the carbon version with its rear wheel drive conversion, instantly it went onto this list. It just drives so much better than the front wheel drive counterparts. This as well, in case you aren't aware, is one of the standard engine noises that you'll hear other rivals use, the Hydrus. And when you I would really recommend beating all the short time road rules to drive this car. It is so much better than the front wheel drive counterpart, but it's stunt conversion as well, you're able to do some really, really impressive stunts. And it can, seriously, it can actually get you places really quick. It is surprisingly quick, this car. The Annihilator, just like the Hydra's Techno, is another car where you will hear the rivals use. It's one of the standard engine notes. And I've, I had to include this one at some point because the, the liveries are just badass, especially with the... Um with this one here, the Annihilator Street Rod, it is just everything the other two Annihilators are, the Phoenix and the regular one, however it's just more of it, slightly stronger speed conversion of uh, boost and it is just a lot quicker, not only that though, when you do actually use the boost, it wheelies as well, so it is just absolutely everything the other two use, however it is just a little bit more responsive and it's still got incredible strength to go with it, so this will as well deal some damage at insanely high speeds that only other cars can dream of.
Let me tell you now, this list at no point was very easy to make whatsoever, but now we're getting into the top 10 and we're kicking things off with the Tempesta. Now, unlike the GT, the regular Tempesta is incredibly nice to drive, incredibly easy as well. You are able to pull off really nice drifts that just it's great to drive. The GT version? No, this is a completely different animal and an animal that I absolutely love to throw around some of the corners. This car demands your full attention. If you are not careful, you are going to end up in a car from just a light tap on the brakes to drift around the corners. It, it demands your full attention to get even just ridiculous speeds from this car. And like I said, ridiculous speeds because the payoff for managing to wrestle this car around the corners is something insanely quick. And the drifts that this thing can do at the high speeds it gets it, a lot of cars have to use the handbrake to actually get around some of the corners, it, seriously throw this car around the city and just tap the brake at some of these 90 degree corners, I'm not using the handbrake here whatsoever and for this corner coming up here, it acts like I do, but I just don't and you, if you manage to pull that off, you would, it's a car that not a lot of things will be able to get away to challenge with and you were able to get away from some pursuers really really easily by making just last minute decisions that if they are not paying attention fully they are just going to completely miss you so this is pretty much one of the perfect outrunning cars for those pesky nighthawks. When it comes to race cars, I'm always a fan, whether it be new technology or just old brute force. And the 500 GT is definitely just the, a homage to classic race cars. I mean, A, it's got, it's based off like a Ford GT, 40. B, it's golf livery. I mean, that's just iconic in just iconics, no matter what. The fact as well that, yes, at low speed, this car is a little bit unwieldy, as you'd expect, but this, as soon as you hit that boost, it gets up to its speed just insanely quick. It really does not take much to just launch this car to its top speed or whatever. I'm not too sure myself, but it does not take long for this Ford to get up to speed and absolutely fly away from a lot of the other cars, like they're just standing still. The fact as well that this responds just brilliantly to whatever input you use. It really does just solidify this car and it easily has to be in the top 10 at some point. Speaking of race cars, up next, well, we've got basically a stock car with the BRT Orville Champ. Um, now, this is on for a specific reason. Well, mostly because, well, it doesn't actually drive that bad, especially for an aggression car. It's actually pretty responsive. Uh, the main reason why it's on here, though, is just the noises of the engine. It's just absolutely incredible. The fact that when you are, when you're not boosting and things like that, you just hear the, um, you would just hear the forced induction just absolutely carrying you at those high speeds and then when you're on the boost you just get that glorious V8 noise and it really is just a fantastic car and it's, it can do out, it can dish out some good damage with relatively high uh, response times as well with uh, how the car drives so it seriously is pretty fun I'd uh, throw it a few, I'd throw it around a few road rages see for yourself because it's a 
He is actually a really good car for them. Nothing will come close to how cool the paint jobs are, I reckon, on the Hawkers. Like, they are just, in my opinion at least, easily sporting the coolest paint jobs in all of Burnout Paradise, especially the uh, Hawker Mech, which I'll show you off later. Um, you know, these cars are just impressively quick. They really are complemented with the stunt boost, and you are able to just do some really impressive stunt runs, and it's just... With relative ease, I mean, just look at the Hawker mech, for instance. Look at all the glowing lights and how the wheels change. The lights on the wheels change, and you just swap through all boost and lights. I mean, I'm sorry, it's there's just no other car that's cooler than it. Just complement by how well it drives. Now I may not be the hugest fan of Japanese cars, or cars that are replicating the Japanese cars, however there's just nothing short that I do not like about the Ikuza GT, especially the carbon. You know, being the only carbon car to be swapped to an aggression boost style, just making the normal Ikuza just faster overall, keeping still its, its characteristics, and but just making it nicer to drive overall, making it a little bit less heavy. Uh, in terms of how it handles and just how it accelerates as well, it really does just add to the Carbon Icusa, and I can't, it's just a seriously good car, I do want to generally make an R34 look like this in real life, and that's me being honest. There's one thing I will always love, and that's estates, especially ones that are actually seriously quick, and the spur fits into that build perfectly. I mean, for one, it's pretty much the only estate that's uh, drivable in any of the Burnout games, so of course it's going to be instantly cool, in my opinion, and it is a serious weapon in the right hand. Yeah, sure, it might not drive the greatest, definitely, um, when it comes to cars in my top 15, this is one of the uh, worser driving one because it's a little bit slow to respond and it does feel heavy. But when you feel, but it might feel heavy. However, you definitely do feel like you are absolutely punching someone's car when you have just been slamming into them with some serious speed, especially in road rage events. I can't get enough of the spur, and I just I drive this car constantly on Burnout Paradise.
fourth place and third place were something incredibly hard to rank. And whilst I'm talking about this now, I'm still not sure if I've, what the decision I've made is the correct one. But it's here anyway. Fourth place, I'm shoving the Revenge Racer there. I mean, first of all, it's the final car in Burnout Revenge. Immediately, it's a fantastic car. Plus as well, yes, it might not be a V16 that's in the car, it's a V10. And getting an absolute screaming V10 is some of just the best noises you will ever hear in real life. Seriously, just Google the LFA or the Porsche Carrera GT. You will know what I mean. And complimented with this car's serious engine note is its serious speed and its insane handling with responsiveness. It, it is just an absolutely incredible car and absolutely worth every moment of driving it even if I, you know, managed to crash it and whatnot, I, I, even when not boosting, it still feels like you're going 200 miles an hour, and then when you step on the boost, it feels like you're going about 500. So now we're getting into the top three, and to kick things off, I have gone for the X12. Now, the reason I've... This I'm still undecided on, but let me explain to you why I've put the X12 as high as it is. First of all, I do honestly think this is one of the most rewarding cars to get correct. It's, def it's like the Tempest GT of... Well, with, that, with the Tempest GT, like I said, that car just absolutely wants to kill you no matter what but you get some absolute outrageous speed if you get the car correct. It's just much trickier to get that car absolutely correct. The X12, it gives you, I'm fairly sure, even more insanity speed, but at a much lower risk to you as the driver. Yeah, sure, y you know, at some low stuff, this car will still absolutely want to kill you if you don't get it right, but when you get the higher speeds, I don't even, around a lot of times, I don't even have to drift around the corners and the front end just darts through the corners. It's an insanely good car. And with the carbon version being converted into a stunt boost, you can get some serious, serious airtime and land some bowel rolls that the normal version can't really that the normal version kind of struggles with for that car's lower speed, but even the slower but even the regular versions, they've still got just ridiculous ridiculous speed to combine them it's just the carbon is more of the car and it absolutely would recommend getting this carbon x12 because you will not regret a single moment of just being able to experience some absolutely incredible speeds and just seeing that how many people would try and keep up with you and really struggle to do so it was just how responsive this car is to how you drive no matter where you take it. So rocking in at second place, I have got the GT2400. Now, the thing about this car is, yes, this does have that little bit of understeer. It does take a, just a little bit of more convincing just to get that back end kicking out compared to something like the Carbon X12, the Revenge Race, or the Tempest, the GT, etc. However, because of that little understeer, 
for some reason, with this car, I have that just sense of security with it, that the car is not just all of a sudden going to snap out on me really unpredictably. And I've got to try and somehow gather it all back up before I end into another car or a wall. With the GT2400, I really do feel like I am just constantly in control. Couple that with just a sweet looking car with a sweet engine and it's, it's honestly probably my favourite car to actually just drive because there's just so much sense of that like, I really can't just drive this car and not have to worry about anything, you know, I can just drift round the corners, I can try and swing it into the corner as much as possible and it will just be a very, very predictable car. So of course I had to rank it highly on my list, I wouldn't have it any other way. Now before I reveal to you my favourite car in Burnout Paradise, there's a few shortlist cars that I have to make, kicking things off with the Dust Storm Super Turbo. This car came with the Big Surf Island DLC and well, I, I really did fall in love with it. Just the stunting potential of this buggy is absolutely insane and this is really just one of the ultimate stunt vehicles for just going out for pure points and whatnot. Now, the reason why I didn't quite give it into the uh, my top 15 was mostly just because, I don't know, I just felt like... I just felt like other cars were more deserving to be in the top 15. Now, do not get me wrong, this car is just absolutely fantastic. So, if you, if you want the remastered version, I would try and go for this car and just do some stunt runs in it. And you will be absolutely surprised at how well this car can really do at it. Even if you're watching me just fail to land a few power balls, it does better than that, trust me. The second car on the shortlist is the Fastback Special. Now, this was originally in my top 50, and it was really close to being there until I tested out a few more cars that I actually was a fan of, and then this car just fell short. Now, I will admit, this is one of the best sounding cars in Burnout Paradise from just engine note alone, and I really do love the aesthetics of it. It does feel like a classic American muscle car and drive it too. However, it also does feel like it and I don't think really given this car, the speed boost was kind of the right thing. It feels like this car definitely would have suited better being an aggression car. Um, because well, it, it drives really heavily, is not responsive whatsoever and will definitely take a few getting to get the back end out. However, do not sniff on this car when it comes to road rages. Third shortlist car? Well, the Hunter Civilian. I have to include this at some point, the Marked Man car. It, it, it's just iconic and it looks in great, it just sounds incredible. The one thing I just didn't like about it is just unfortunately 
it is just an extremely heavy car. It is really, really clunky. Well, I on. Well, yes, that is what it's meant to be. It is a very strong car, and it is a little, and it is nicer to drive than the um, Hunter Citizen. However, it's still not that great, to be honest. The speed of it, though, is really, really nice. However, you are going to find yourself having a bit of issues trying to wrestle this car around some of the corners, especially when you're in road rages. It's just, it is a lot better on paper than really I think it is in person. And the final honourable mention car, the Cavalry Bootlegger. Now, like I said, I am a huge fan of the Cavalry. I really do like the car. And it's a shame that it is the starter car because it is just really slow. But because there was a faster version of it, I just had to throw it on here. It, and this was seriously close to getting onto the, onto the list as a whole because, like I said, I've always loved the Cavalry. I think it just looks great. It sounded great as well, and it, it was such, it was a great beginner car, to be honest. To just mill around and just learn and just get to grips with the game, and then just having a nice, faster one to just really, it's still, it's, it's still a very sensible car, if you will. It still will help you sort of learn, uh, it will teach you the game a little bit, help you get around the map a lot easier, because it's still a very responsive car, and it's just a little bit quicker than the regular uh, cavalry so it just helps you get from places A to B just that little bit quicker however there are just other cars on this list that definitely I did just prefer to drive and were just a little bit just quicker than the uh, car or were just as good at stunt runs if not a bit better so the car did fall apart just fall away a little bit however you know I, I still will say that this is a very very good car and plus as well it is got the iconic horn that um well i can't really play because you can probably guess why if you've uh, played the game that is And here it is, my favourite car in Burnout Paradise, the Ubershall 8. I cannot tell you how much fun I have had in this car. It is ridiculously good. It is a seriously quick car. And I remember just messing around with this car multiplayer so many times, running away from Formula 1 cars and Nighthawks and just blitzing them in this thing. It is an insanely quick car. Coupled that with this car, being one of the only ones that when you land a burnout you get a thunder sound effect and it's just so goddamn cool to listen i do wish more cars had it but just the, the ludicrous speed of it the how great this car handles and the fact that there's a carbon version that um will that is very exclusive and you have to do a specific challenge to get that the, car, the game doesn't even tell you about it really just adds to this car as a whole and I can't help but love it and and the fact as well that it becomes a stunt car yeah sure it might not be the greatest stunt car but the fact you can get serious airtime with it it does deserve a number one spot
And there you have it, my top 15 cars in Burnham Paradise with a few other additional um, honourable mentions. I do apologise that this video was probably absolutely terrible, I've never done one of these before and I'm awful at describing why I like certain things, but I do hope you enjoyed. All feedback is appreciated. If you have your own opinions or if, um, or, you know, there might be some cars that did surprise you or if you're not so sure about why I put a certain car here, you don't agree with me entirely, put all that in the comments below or join my discord as well if you have your own list i'll be more than willing to hear it however that is going to be it for me look after yourselves ciao for now